Let's try. Okay. All right. So today we do chapter. Let's see what we got. Chapter twenty. This is about job order costing. We just call it for short job costing. Costing. The other type of costing is called process costing. So, what we studied last time, what we studied last time was the foundation. Now, this job costing and process costing represent the core of this whole course. It's going to take a while for you, it's going to take a while for me. Hopefully, I'll be able to finish the whole chapter. We have like 60 slides, way, way, way too many. All right, so you got to pay attention because it's the same story I told you last time. If you miss this one, you're done with the course, meaning you're not going to understand anything from the rest of the course, okay? So if necessary, you got to ask the questions and maybe go a little bit slower, but we're not going to have enough time to finish it all. All right, so the first section is very simple. We discuss what is the job costing system and what is process costing system. These are the two main types of costing systems. The next chapter will cover in detail the process costing. Today all we need to understand, well, what's the difference and when we use the job order costing. Then we go through the, what is called the cost flow. And the cost flow will tell you how you accumulate manufacturing costs, how you accumulate these costs. Then how you assign manufacturing costs to work in process. From work in process, you move to finished work. And then from finished goods to costs of good sold. So this is what the flow is. The flow is from manufacturing costs to working process to finished goods to cost of goods sold. Then we got a little easier step of how you do this for service companies. So this will be a very special case for service companies. And there's a nice little section on a summary. So you need to understand the summary and it's like step one, step two, step three, step four. You need to understand the simple steps that we go through. And finally, you need to understand what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of this whole thing. And finally, the last section is about reports. What's the cost of good manufacturing schedule? Schedule is simply a table which explains something. When you look at the schedule, you understand what's going on. And then we got one other thing called under and over applied manufacturing overhead. You're going to have quite a few exercises for homework about applying overhead and what happens if you under apply and what happens if you over apply again that's what I'll be explaining today for the next couple of hours so as we said last time we now begin this and the next chapter is a special subject of accounting of managerial accounting which is cost accounting cost accounting means measuring reporting and reporting product costs so all of this is about product costs for example what is the cost if it's a service of this program of this whole program or what is the cost of your class over here? 
as I mentioned, your class over here is not simply my salary. The cost here includes the electricity, the air conditioning, the projector, the computer, the TV of the room. There are many other costs. How we add those costs to get the cost of this course? And then how we add the cost of all courses to get the cost of your education. If we know the cost of your education, we can put a price on it. And the price will include profit and profit margin. Okay, so one of the characteristics is that you use perpetual inventory system. That's a different story you should have studied. We're not going to go through it now. And the two basic types of cost accounting are job order system or job costing and process costing. Sometimes we say a cost system, sometimes we say simply costing. So when we say job cost system, it's the same as job costing. And sometimes we say job order costing. For short, for easy, we simply say job costing. Okay? The other one is process costing. Okay? And the whole thing is called cost accounting. Alright? So there are two main types. Today we do the job costing, but there is also processes. All right, so now to the first one, the job order system, job cost. Number one, costs are assigned to each job or each batch. A job will be, for example, the following. You have a publisher who publishes books. For textbook number one, it's going to be one job. Textbook number two will be a second job. Textbook number three will be a third job. So you have different different products. Very different products. If you're making furniture, one job will be making tables. A second job will be making chairs. Okay? A third one will be making sofa. Okay, so you got something of a different product. And a job will mean simply that you have to make a number of products. So if it's textbook, one textbook, you make 1,000 copies. From the second textbook, you make 500 copies. From the third textbook, you make 200 copies. If it's tables, you make 50 tables. If it's chairs, you make 200 chairs, okay? So you have different jobs. Same thing here. You got one course, it's going to be 30 students. Another course is going to be 15 students. The third course is going to be 45 students, okay? So each course will, could represent a separate job, okay? That's what you do. Next one, it could be for a specific order. So a customer comes and says, we want 50 textbooks. So a simple job will be, you go down to the copy center and say, hey, we are a class of 30 and we want 15 textbooks. Maybe two people will work well. So they have to make 15 textbooks. And that's, this, this will involve the copying, the printing, and then putting it in a little booklet, okay? So Xerox and putting it in everything and binders and all that, everything will be one job. And that's gonna be a specific <coughs> order, order of 15 textbooks in a calendar, for example. Usually each job or batch, batch is the same as job, batch means doing, a number of things. So batch means make 20 textbooks, okay? Or make 
20 shirts, okay? Or make 50 bags, okay? Or make 100 chairs, okay? So that will represent a batch. So a batch means doing the same thing many times, 100 chairs, okay? But it's still a small, it's still a small thing. So each job has its own distinguishing characteristics. For example, textbook number one, the characteristic is accounting. Well, textbook number two is mathematics. Accounting is big, mathematics is small. Then, okay, accounting is 20 copy, mathematics 100 copy. Okay? So, what's the goal? The goal is very simple. Compute the cost. That's the goal of any costing system. The goal is to calculate the cost. How much the textbook costs to them. Okay? How much 20 books cost. And if 20 books cost 2,000, they say the price is 3,000 so that they can have a little bit of a profit. Okay. So, the goal is to calculate the cost, and then based on the cost, you can put a price. Okay. The goal of any business, remember, is to make a profit. In order to make a profit, you need to know what price to put. And in order to know the price, you need to know the cost. Because if you put a price, but your cost is higher, you lose it. It's that simple. So, it measures the cost for each job. It's not about time. This is not about, oh, what's the cost for one week, or for two weeks, or for five weeks, doesn't matter. The cost is for 20 textbooks. You may do them in one hour, you may do them in one week. The question is, for one particular job, in this particular case, the cost is for the whole course. It doesn't matter whether we finish the course in one week, in two weeks, whether we meet three times a week, or two times a week, or only on Monday morning. The question is, what is the cost of this course, okay? And then, if you're taking 10 courses, what is the cost of all 10 courses, okay? So each course will represent a separate job. Then all 10 courses, they can calculate how much they cost. And based on that, they will make your tuition with a little profit, maybe, okay? So these are the main characteristics. The characteristic is a job or a batch, okay? That's the key piece. Now you got the picture, everybody's got it in the textbook. You'll see what it looks like. If you're making textbooks, or here, if you're making envelopes, you use some ink. You use some ink. If it's printing, you use some, we call it toner. toner. You use some typesetting. You need to set things up. If you're gonna make 1,000 newspapers, you, know, you need to set things up properly. And you have whatever, let's say some invitations. You put the cost of the one piece, of the second piece, of the third piece. This job, jobs will usually have a number. In accounting, you're not going to say job accounting textbook, job mathematics textbook. You're just going to say job 9501. The next job is going to be 9502. Next one is 9504, 9504, or job 001, 002, 003, 004, whatever that might be. All right, finally, we can sit together. So, jobs will have a number. We use numbers, okay? So, the business may have four digits and job's going to be 
Usually, the numbers will be sequential. When the job is completed, you say finish, next job. You may have three, four, five, ten, or twenty different jobs at the same time. You may have one job for accounting textbook, a completely different job for mathematics textbook, and another job for English textbook. So, if you have five courses, maybe they'll have five different jobs. Each job will have a number, okay? And then you keep the costs of each. So that's a very simple. So each job has distinguishing characteristics and each job has its own cost. The cost of toner for the one textbook, the cost of for the other, okay? So that's simple. Now we are switching from job costing to order costing. What is order costing and when we use it? So we have a large volume of same things. For example, you produce cereal. A very good example is the manufacturer of three in one, the coffee. They probably make one million, two million, three million. For Thailand, maybe they can make 100 million, okay? So they make the same one over and over and over for months, okay? They use, they make it month after month after month, and they make a million after million after million, okay? That will be an example of cereal. Same thing with motorcycles. Honda makes millions and millions of the same motorcycle type, okay? Now, if you take a different Honda, Honda Scoopy or Honda Shadow, okay, or Honda whatever else you have, for each model, they will have a separate system. So, one system for one model, second system for second model, okay? For example, you make CDs. A good example will be all of these bottles that you buy. They don't make two, they don't make hundred, they make one million, two million, five million. They make it a month after a month, maybe year after year after year, okay? Every month they can make one million of these, okay? So for the water, they use process cost. Uh, for that little thing, they have millions and millions of these, again, and it will be a separate system, okay? Same thing will be for these markers. Yes, each marker is separate, but they make the blue color millions of these and sell them all over the world, okay? So, if it's, if they make big number of the same thing. So, the products are very similar. Now, it's very different if you make shoes. You make, let's say, 100 pairs of this, you make 1,000 pairs of that shoes, you make different shirts, that's a whole different story. So, if the products are very similar. So, if that's the case, you accumulate costs for a time period. So, for this month, they make half Million. So you accumulate the cost on a period basis. And that's why we call it process. So process systems and process costing uses a period. And the job costing uses a batch. You measure the particular batch. And costs are assigned to departments, if you got a different department, or to specific processes. So if it's Nescafe, they're going to have grade one, they're going to have this type of coffee, they have type, that type of coffee, they may have, let's say, 10 different types of coffee, okay? And each will be a separate 
process. And from each type of coffee, they'll be making millions every month. Okay? So you use process costing when you have similar products that you can do for a long, long, long time. Here in the textbook, they simply do 20 copy, they get it done in two days, and it's finished. Okay? Then they do mathematics textbook, they do it in five days, and it's finished. Maybe they'll do mathematics textbook after six months, the next year. We call it for the next batch of students. Okay? Same thing with tables. They have to make 100 tables, they're done. Then they have 400 chairs, they're done. Okay, maybe they'll do the next one, maybe they'll do after three months. Okay, so that's the big difference. All right, example of a process cost in this particular case is oil. They pump oil out of the ground. House oil. Now, right, oil. So from oil, you take some benzene, the volatile part, you take it, then the benzene is made, made into whatever, some pellets, and from pellets they make this. They'll use hundreds of maybe of thousands of barrels, they'll use millions of tons, and they'll make tens of millions of discs, and they'll make them for many, many months or maybe many years, okay? They make probably tens of millions of discs, okay? Sony, Hitachi, whatever. So, the products are similar. They're produced over a specific period of time. Again, maybe three months, maybe six hours, months, maybe three years, okay? So I got some simple question over here. Cost accounting involves the measuring, reporting, and reporting of A, B, C, or D. A. A. It's about product cost. Okay. It's not about future cost. It's not about processes. It's not about decisions. Cost accounting is specific to product cost. Now. Managerial accounting is about information to make managerial decisions, okay? But cost accounting is simply about product cost, okay? Easy. Next one. What? Jobs one, money lost, whatever. You have to read it up at your home. The point is simple. If you run a business, you need to calculate your cost. Because if you don't calculate your cost correctly, you may put a low price and you may be losing money. Okay? So that's important to understand. So now we're back for the rest of these two or three lectures on job costing. So, cost flow is how the costs move. And costs move similar to the physical flow. Physical flow means how the product moves. So, you look at how the product moves and you're going to follow in accounting, the cost will follow the product. So if the product moves step one, step two, step three, the cost will be also step one, step two, step three. Right? This is the next section. You see it there? Yeah. So we're looking at the flow. There will be, of course, the picture coming later in a bit. So, Manufacturing cost. It's a simple rule. It's very easy rule that manufacturing costs are you put them to work in process. So if you got a manufacturing cost, it goes to work in process. The next step, when it's completed, 
becomes finished goods. Okay? And then when it's sold, becomes cost of goods sold. So you see here you have step one, step two, step three. Step one, manufacturing costs, work in process. Step two, completed job. Step three, selling the product. Product sold. Okay? So if you want to think in terms of a product, the first one is working the product, the second one is completing the product, the third one is selling the product. Okay? So while you work on it, while it gets finished, what's going to, these are the three primary steps in the flow. Let's see if they got a picture. Yeah, picture, picture. So you have four accounts. You have four accounts because you have three steps. So this represents step number one from here, from here to here. This represents step number two from here to here. And this represents step number three. So if you have three steps, this involves four main accounts. The manufacturing costs, the work in process, Finished inventory, cost of goods sold. It's always like that. Okay? And now from last time, from last lecture, from last homework, you have that the manufacturing costs are three. It's the same, I'm just repeating. Direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing. Forward. And we will see that at the very end, the manufacturing overhead is a little tricky, is a little harder. We'll need special technique for the manufacturing overhead. But now it's clear. You got the manufacturing costs in three different groups. That's what we did last time. And you got to move them to here, to here, and to here. And this is the Flow. And this is step one, step two, step three. So you're going to have four accounts or types of accounts. Here you may have, all right, here you may have three different types of raw materials, okay? You may have the paper, the printer, the whatever, electricity, I don't know, something else. Here you have two or three types of labor, okay? The labor may be the teacher, the administrator, okay? Well, the administrator is going to be overhead and the cleaner, somebody who cleans the room, okay? So you have two or three here, five or six here, ten different here. Two, you're going to have depreciation, taxes, sales, okay? Administration. All of this will be here. And you're going to be accumulating. Now, the next thing is very, very simple. It's very common sense. If you have three jobs, let's say three different textbooks, you're going to have three works in process. So, work in process accounting, work in process mathematics textbook, work in process English textbook. Okay? So, if you have three jobs, you're going to have Three working process inventory. Then you're gonna have finished goods. Same thing. You have three jobs, you're gonna have three different finished goods. And finally, for cost of goods sold, they will go cost of goods sold for the one, for the other, for the third one. And then when you have for three jobs, cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold for accounting, for mathematics, for English, then you're gonna add the cost of goods sold together, okay? To get the total cost of goods sold, okay? So you will have different accounts, but they're under the same category. So work in process coffee, work in process tea, work in process milk, okay? Or 
working process is going to be on the scoopy, working process on the dream, working process on the some other on the on the way. Yeah. So each one will have its own working process, and then finished goods again on the dream, on the scoopy, on the way. Okay. So that's made it clear. Next one. Yes, let's take a look at how it works. It begins with raw materials. Now, how do we account for the raw materials? Well, that's from your first accounting class. When you buy raw material, for example, you buy these markers, you say debit marker in credit, if you pay with cash, cash. So, debit marker, credit, cash. So, here, when you purchase, you say debit material, maybe coffee, credit, cash. So, when you use it, when you use it, when you use the coffee, now you say credit coffee, it becomes debit working process. So this arrow here means credit coffee, debit working process. Okay, that's remember this one is credit debit. This little arrow, and they also have now numbers. Step one, step two, step three, step four. How many steps? How many steps? How many steps? Eight. All right, take a look. Step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Step number one: purchase raw material. And the purchase of raw material is over here. Debit, coffee, credit, cash. Step number two: incur factory labor. Step number two, incur factory labor. So incurring factory labor, when you have a salary, it becomes debit factory labor, same as salary expense, and credit becomes salary payable. Now the salary expense or factory labor is the same thing. You're going to say later on, we're going to see in number five, okay? So let's go to number three, manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead will be depreciation, insurance, repairs, indirect materials used. Indirect materials will be like, okay, little things that you don't account for, and indirect labor. Indirect labor, maybe the labor of the accountant. Remember, indirect labor will be the supervisor. Indirect labor will be repair of the machine. Indirect, so you have all of these indirect labor. And of course, you may have here taxes too. So you have three different overheads. One overhead will be insurance, you know, depreciation insurance, another one will be indirect and indirect. And now we'll go to step number five. Factory labor is used. When we say factory labor is used, you move the factory labor here, you move it over here. To move it, the factory labor means you, before you did debit the labor. Now we say credit labor, labor, debit work in process. Okay? Now let me just repeat. This is something you have learned and probably heard hundred times. This side, the left side, is called debit. The right side is called credit. So when we say this side, we say debit factory labor. When you say this side, say credit factory labor. So here becomes 
credit factory labor, debit working process. So the left side simply means debit. We call it debit. We don't call it that. We call it debit. Okay? Number six. Set number six. Overhead is applied. So when you apply overhead, you say credit overhead, debit working process. And then you got next step. Completed goods are recognized. So when you finish, you say, oh, completed 20 accounting textbooks. This means you move them from work in process to finish goods. You move them by saying credit cost of completed jobs, credit work in process, then finish goods. Okay? So you move from work in process to finish goods by saying credit work in process, then finish goods. And now the last step, the last step is moving from finished goods, cost of goods, sold. When you sell the product, you move them. You move them by saying, or writing, credit, finished goods, inventory, debit, cost of goods, sold. Okay. So, you see here, you got the first part, okay? Materials, factory label, manufacturing, overhead. These three, let me go to the previous slide. These three correspond to this part. This work in process inventory corresponds to this work in process inventory. Finished goods, finished goods, okay? So before we said step one, step two, step three. All of this here is step one up to here. This is step two and this is step three. Okay? So step two is only this one here and step three is only this one here. And all of this is step one. Okay? You will do cost of goods sold, you will close at the end of the month to expenses. You will close this, we say, in the income statement. So this goes to the income statement. Income statement is revenues and expenses. So this will go in expenses, which we call cost of goods sold. So this goes to income statement at the end of the month, okay? So you're going to have cost of goods sold on the green, cost of goods sold on the shadow, cost of goods sold on the scoopy, right? And at the end of the month, you're going to take all green and everything, and you're going to put in cost of goods sold account at the end of the month. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> okay, so again, it repeats what I already told you, but you just have to remember. So when you do your homework, all you do is follow again the steps. So, number one, you accumulate the manufacturing costs. Raw material, factory labor, manufacturing overhead. Let's go back. You accumulate this, this, and this. That's step number one. I mean, I've been repeating it a few times. Then they go in here to work in process. Let's see if we got the work in process. And then you assign the accumulated cost to the work done. Work done is work in process, 
and then from working process, finished goods. Okay? So you accumulate these. Accumulate means you add them. You add everything together. Okay? After you add them, you calculate the total. So these are the steps. So now we're going back to the first step, which is the accumulation. And the accumulation has accumulation of labor, accumulation of materials, accumulation of overhead. Here is accumulation of raw materials. It just tells you what I did. Raw materials, when you purchase them, you say, debit raw materials. Credit is cash or accounts paid. So, when you purchase raw material, for example, coffee, you say, debit coffee, credit cash. When you purchase materials, you debit the invoice cost and freight is the same as shipping. Freight is the same as shipping. Same as transportation. This is freight. So the cost of material says for coffee, 5,000 bucks. For shipping, 500. The seller may say, shipping is free. So you say, shipping, zero, okay? So you add the shipping cost. And if it's zero, just say, shipping zero, okay? If it's free, if you pay, you say what you pay. Next one. You credit the account for purchase discounts, returns, and allowances. This is everything you already studied when you buy materials. This is from your previous accounting course. So, you debit the purchase price, we call it the invoice cost, and you debit the shipping cost. And you credit, they say, discount 200 bucks, okay? And then you may have a return, you may have an allowance, okay? If they give you a return, that's what you studied before. You always know in advance. They always tell you the return is that much, the allowance is that much, the discount is that much. You usually will just get a discount. Raw materials, 
and then I have to say dash AA2746, then 1000, and then second debit raw materials, AA2850, 32,000. And then I have credit. What's credit? Okay. Wow, is it in the book? <laughs> yes, accounts payable, yes. Or maybe cash, depends on how you do you buy on credit, pay later or pay now. Pay now becomes credit, cash. Pay later becomes account payable. Let's take a look. Raw, okay, they say directly. Raw materials inventory for the two. Let's see, cash or account payable. Account payable for the two. Easy, right? Easy? Easy? Okay. We'll find out on the homework next week. Okay. Number 16. So, remember, all we did so far was materials. Now we gotta do direct labor and overhead. So, factory labor costs is the same, factory labor is the same as direct labor. Exactly the same. Factory labor is the same as direct labor. Exactly the same procedure. You say, David, factory labor, or simply David, labor, okay? And credit will be salaries payable, or wages payable. Or if you pay in cash, say cash. Depends on how you pay, okay? So, for direct labor, you include salary, gross earnings. You include the salary. You include, if there are taxes, you include taxes. So, employer payroll taxes. Payroll means same as salary, okay? Salary. So, if there are taxes, and if there are fringe benefits. Fringe benefits are some other benefits. For example, a uh, very, very nice fringe benefit was when I was teaching at Moho in Phuket last year. Every day I got a lunch. So, every time they pay me a salary, they also pay me every month 20 lunches. I get them for free. Now, to me, it's free, but to the university, not free. They pay for every lunch 40 baht. So, I get every month 20 lunches times 40 baht, 800 baht, okay? So, they will have salary and they'll separately have free lunch. Well, free for me, for them it's expense, they pay for it, okay? So, a free lunch is an example of a fringe benefit. Another example of a fringe benefit, maybe you go to work and they have little child care, a little center, if you have a baby, you take your baby with you, while you work, they take care of it, okay? These are fringe benefits. So, fringe benefit is a benefit which the employee gets Free in the employer base. Example. Example. Yeah. So, Wallace Manufacturer has thirty two on labor. 27 relates to wages payable and 5,000 to taxes. The entry, 
is report. So, what's the debit? What's the credit? Debit. Huh? Debit. Direct labor. How much? Thirty-two thousand. Twenty. How much? Thirty-two. And credit what? Salary is payable. How much? Twenty-seven. And it's going to be taxes payable. Five. Let's see. Factory labor thirty-two. And the factory wages payable twenty-seven. And taxes payable five. Okay? You have it in the book there. Okay? Page eight nine two. Okay? Is it clear? Alright? David labor, credit wages payable, credit taxes payable. 32, 27 and 5, 32. Is it clear? Alright. Uh, I guess we go to now overhead. Overhead. Right. So, we already covered direct material. We already covered direct labor. Now we're overhead. With overhead, you can recognize them daily or maybe weekly or maybe monthly. For example, the salary of an accountant, you recognize, meaning you put it in the book every month. Okay? So, you recognize daily or periodically. In the overhead, you use usually adjusting entry. Example of overhead would be depreciation of the machine. Okay. Uh, insurance on the factory will be, okay? So you buy insurance for one year, and every month you recognize 1212, okay? One month, one month, one month, okay? And you also report property taxes. Maybe you report every month, or maybe you report every three months. Depreciation, maybe you report every month, maybe you report every three months, maybe you report once a year, okay? And insurance, the same thing. Maybe month, maybe three months, maybe every 12 months, okay? So, let's see, it should be... Example. Using the data, summarizing entry will be. Oh, they, I think they missed the, to tell us what the problem is, right? Manufacturing, yes. So, they say utilities payable. This will be water, electricity, internet, telephone. Utilities payable is credit. The next one is prepaid insurance. Before, you buy insurance at the beginning of the year, and every month, when you buy insurance, you say, debit, prepaid insurance, credit, cash. And then every month, every month you say, debit, manufacturing, overhead, credit, prepaid insurance, okay? Accounts payable for repairs, Accumulated depreciation for the machines and property taxes for the factory. Okay? Property taxes you don't pay in January or February, you pay them next year. So the taxes are payable. Depreciation is accumulated. This is all. All of this you already studied before, right? All of this you studied in accounting one. Now, the new thing is that you debit manufacturing overhead. Everything else you already studied, right? All of this. So, 4, 2, 2, 3, 1 gives you 13, 8. 
Next one. So, oh, they got a question. When incurred, factory labor costs are debited to for the process factory wages factory labor. C factory labor. Check, check, check. Yeah. 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 Okay. So so far we did was the first step, and the first step was direct labor, direct materials, and overhead. Now we're going to move them to the second one, which is work in process. Okay? Okay? So, you assign them, assign, when you say you assign to work in process, assign is the same as move. Okay, it's exactly the same as move. And you move them, I already told you before. You move them by, you say, then working process and credit. So when you credit raw materials, you move out of raw materials, you move out of labor, and you move out of overhead into working process. So you move out of Materials, labor, and overhead by crediting, and you move into by debit. That's the rule. It's very simple, it's very easy. You make them usually monthly. And the accounting record is called a cost job cost. Sheet. A job cost sheet is simply a piece of paper for all costs of a job. Uh, there will be an example coming. Okay? It's a simple piece of paper and you write everything, all the costs of a particular job. Alright? Next one. Let's see. Is it okay? Slowly, huh? Sorry. Let's see what happens next. I'm curious. Oh, next one is simple question. What is a job? cost sheet. Well, the job cost sheet is just like this. A piece of paper for a particular job. Maybe the job is accounting textbook. How much paper, how much toner, how much printer, how much glue, how much whatever. Okay? It's simply a piece of paper where you accumulate all costs for a particular job. Okay? So, if you're making tables, you say how much for the top, how much for the legs, okay? If you're making, let's say, coffee, how much for the coffee, how much for the ice, how much for the plastic cap, how much for the straw, okay? So, if you put every cost associated with the job. So, you use it for a specific job. If you have 10 jobs, you will have 10 job sheets. Okay? You have 50 jobs, 50 job sheets. You use to determine the total and unit cost of a completed job. You use first to get total cost. Every single cost you put there. And if you make 100 tables, divide by 100. If you make 50 Hondas, you divide by 50. Okay? By the number of units. You usually put the cost on a daily basis. So, at the end of the day, you write all the costs associated with the job. Okay? When you're an accountant, you know at every time how many jobs you have. 
now I have three jobs, or now I have seven jobs, now I have 11 jobs. And you go through each job, and every, at the end of the day, you write for every job. Maybe there's nothing, okay? And each entry to a work in process inventory must be accompanied by corresponding posting to one or more job sheets. So, you make each entry twice. One entry to work in process, and one entry into the job cost sheet. It's actually the other way around. You first write in the job cost sheet, and the same one in work in process, okay? You use it twice. So each job cost sheet will tell you what happens, and when you write in the cost sheet, then you write in work in process on a daily basis. Okay, example, maybe. Okay, this is a, a job cost sheet. You always have a number, 4201, 4202, right, 4203. So each job has a number, item, tables, or item, accounting textbook. The next one, item, mathematics textbook. Next one, item, English textbook, okay? Four, it's going to be IBM second year, IBM third year, IBM first year, okay? So, four is like, who's the customer, okay? Then, quantity, uh, accounting, 20 copy, mathematics, 50 copy, English, 100 copies. Right? They requested, requested today, uh, 17th of November 2014, okay? And they completed, when it's completed, if it's after two days, becomes November 19th, okay? okay? So, you finish, write this only after you complete. You can't write this at the beginning. You write this at the beginning, this at the beginning. So all of these, you write at the beginning. When it's finished, you write this when you know the date, okay? And then you say, hey, for today, direct material, so many. Let's say coffee, so many. Direct labor, so much. Manufacturing, so much. So each day, you write the material, the labor, no one if you have, okay? And at the end, you say, Total direct materials here. Total direct labor here. Total manufacturing overhead, you see? Manufacturing overhead here. And then I have total cost here. And then you say unit cost means total cost divided by the quantity. If it's 20 books, you divide by 20. 50 books divided by 10. It's 100 books by 100. Okay? If you make coffee, if it's 200 coffee, by 200. If it's 50 coffee, okay? That's what it looks like. This is the job cost sheet. Uh, on one of the homeworks, you simply have to fill out. You have to write it, you have to fill out what is the job cost sheet look like. Or they give you the cost uh, the, the, the job cost sheet. You have to make it entries. So when you make an entry here, you have to make an entry in work in process. It's time for a little break, right? Yeah. Yeah. Coffee break. Yeah, thank you. Ten for fifteen. 15.